Let's do two more examples about probability trees. Let's say we have a manufacturer of 27 inch bicycle rims has determined that a rim may have three types of defects. The diameter of the rim is not within the specifications, which we'll call D. The holes for the spoke attachments are not evenly spaced, S. And the rim has a visible flaw in the alloy surface of F. So when we have D, S, or F, those are our actual defects. And these types of defects are assumed to occur independently of each other, so they don't affect each other. Based on past inspection data, 4% of all the rooms have a type D defect, 2% have a type S, and 6% have a type F. And a room may have more than one type of defect. So if we were to draw a tree diagram, I'd start off, and I could either have a D defect or a not D. And then whether or not I have a D defect, I could also have an S defect or not have an S defect. And similarly, if I started with a not D defect, I could still have an S defect or a not S. And then I could have an F defect or not F. And no matter what I had already, I can still have an F or not F. And when you're doing probability trees, because this is just a really kind of nice, easy, different way to figure out some complex probabilities, you go through and you say, what was the probability of D getting a D defect? So a D has a probability of 4%, S has 2%, and F has 6%. So to get a D, that would be 4%. And then to not get a D, it would just be the complement of that, or 1 minus that is 0.96. To get an S, we said that was 2%, so 0 0.02 and not an S would then be 0 0.98. So 0 0.02 for S, 0 0.98 for not S. And then we go through for all the Fs and not Fs, and F had a 6% chance, so 0 0.06, and the complement of that is 0 0.94. 1 minus 0 0.06 is 0 0.94. So fill that in everywhere. So 0 0.06, 0 0.94, 0 0.06, 0 0.94, 0 0.06. 0.94. Now, what we do after you've done all of these, because these are usually our conditional probabilities, or in this case they're independent, so it's not truly, well, you don't have to worry about the conditional probabilities because they are all independent, but if you multiply along the branches, you always get the probability of intersection. So at the end, we'll find the probability of each intersection. by multiplying. So like uh, along this first branch, we find the probability of D and S and F would be, and you multiply along the branches, so 0 0.04 times 0.02 times 0 0.06. 0 0.04, 0 0.02, 0 0.06. 0 0.04, 0 0.06 gives me 0 0.000048. And we can continue for each of these. So we can do the probability for my next branch would be D and S and not F. So D and S and not F would be 0 0.04, 0 0.02, 0 0.94. Okay. And this gives me 0 0.000752. And you can go through and do each of these. We're just going multiply along the branches. I'm just going to write them in. So we're at 0 0.0023510. Try these on your own, and you can pause it and try and see if you get the same results. 0 0.001152, 0 0.018048, 0 0.05112, 0 0.8, and 0.88435. So these are the probabilities of each possible intersection. When you're doing a tree diagram, you do want to just find the probabilities of all of the intersections. And then we'll actually go on to our steps after this and try and figure out what they actually want me to find. But it's usually a good step to find all of your possible intersections. Okay. 
Using the information given above, what percentage of all rims that are produced will have only a type D defect? Okay. So come back up. We only want a D defect. So which branches can you go along that will have just a D? Well, we can't have an S or an F, so we want to go to not S and not F. Okay. If we went to not D, well, that doesn't have a type D defect, so we don't want to come down here at all. So the only branch that has just the D is D and not S and not F, which would be this one right here. So we were looking for the probability of D and not S and not F, which was 0 0.0368. And that one you probably could have done without the tree diagram. It would have been too hard, but the next one is much easier with the tree diagram. So what is the probability of getting a rim that has exactly two defects? So to do this, we'll come up and we'll go through and we'll circle every branch that has two defects. So we could go D and S, that would be two, so then we'll do not F. So we want this one. And then if we did D and not S, I'd also need an F to get two, so we can do this one. D, not S, not F, that would only be one. No, okay. Not D, but S and F, S and F is two, so that one would work. Okay. Not D, S, and not F, no, that's only one. Not D, not S, and F is only one. Not S, not S, and not F is only zero. So we only have three choices that include two defects. So we'll add those together. So what you do is you find all of the choices that include what you want and then you add them together because they're all possibilities or different ways to get what you want. So you find all the ways to get what you want and add them together. So we get 0 .004255. And finally, one finished rim is to be randomly selected for inspection. What is the probability that the rim will have at least one type of defect? Now, you should see at least one and automatically think of the complement rule. But if you didn't, the tree diagram does make this easy as well. So if you want at least one defect, go through and circle or underline everything that has at least one defect. So everything that has at least one defect would be everything but the bottom. So you add up everything but the bottom. Or we could use the complement rule. So the probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. And again, if you look back up which one has no defects, it'll only be this bottom one. So one minus our point eight eight four three five equals point one one five six five. So about an eleven, eleven and a half percent chance of at least one defect. Let's do one more. We want to draw two cards from a standard 52 card deck without replacement. Now because it's without replacement, we know that's dependent because they do affect each other. We're interested in determining if the cards are hearts or not hearts. So you draw the tree diagram and first you can either get a heart or not a heart. Then you draw another card and your second card can either be a heart or not a heart. And heart or not a heart. Since that's all you're interested in is hearts or not, that's what we put in our tree diagram. Now the first time you draw a card, if you want to get a heart, you'd have 13 out of 52 cards are hearts. And if you wanted to not get a heart, well there are 39 out of 52 cards that are not hearts. Or you could do 1 minus 13 out of 52. But that changes for your second card. We did it without replacement. We don't put those cards back, so these probabilities change. So now I drew one heart out, so if I want to get another heart, I would only have 12 hearts and only 51 cards. For a not heart, well there would still be 39 not hearts because I didn't actually draw a heart, but there are only 51 cards. Okay. Now if I do a not heart first and then I want a heart, there would still be 13 hearts, but only 51 cards. And if I drew a not heart first and I want another not heart, there are now only 38 not hearts and only 51 cards. Okay. Then you come over here to find the probability of intersection. 
and to find the probability of the intersection, again, it's really easy. All you have to do is multiply along the branches. So if I want the probability of a heart and a heart, I multiply along, so it would be 13 out of 52 times 12 out of 51, which is 0 0.0588. Now probability of heart and not heart is 13 out of 52 times 39 out of 51, which is 0 0.1912. Probability of not heart, intersect heart, is 39 out of 52 times 13 out of 51, which is also 0 0.1912. And probability of not heart and not heart is 39 out of 52 times 38 out of 51, which is 0.5588. Now that we have all of those, now we go through and see what we actually want to find. So what is the probability of getting exactly one heart? So if you want to get exactly one heart, you go through and you say, which ones have one heart? This one has two hearts, this one has one heart, and this one has one heart. So these two combinations each have one heart. So we could do 0 0.1912 plus 0 0.1912, which gives me 0.3824. Now number three, what's the probability of getting a heart on the second draw? So you go through, which ones have hearts on the second draw? This one has a heart on the second draw, and this one has a heart in the second draw. So you add up those probabilities. So 0.1912 plus 0.0588 is 